Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Cassie. I am a full-time Instagram content creator and I have a bachelor's degree in integrated media. And on this channel, I talk about tips and tricks for my Instagram, things I figured out. I also create fashion and lifestyle content as well as beauty content on here and my Instagram as well. So go check that out if you are not following me over there. Today I'm going to be talking about the month of June because it was the busiest month I have had as a content creator and I wanted to talk about how I kept myself organized and how I kept myself from going crazy the whole time because when you get a lot of campaigns on your hands, it can be very overwhelming. If you are in need of more tips on how to keep yourself organized as a creator, keep watching this video and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so I had my busiest month on Instagram in the month of June, collaborations wise. I had about a total of eight collaborations on the books in June. Now, first I wanted to talk about where I got those from. Now, first I had a couple brands reach out to me organically through the email that I have in my Instagram bio. That is the best way that brands will be able to reach me. Um, DMs get lost sometimes or sent to spam. I also get collaborations through platforms like Ambassador or Mini Social or other platforms like Octoly that send PR out a lot. So those are a few other platforms that I have. I will talk about a couple of those later because I don't think I'm gonna be working with them again, but um, that is a good way for just starting out to get collaborations. I also had my monthly reoccurring collaborations like Parade and Express that have ambassadorship programs or affiliate programs that they send out product for campaigns throughout the month or every month you get product for a campaign for that month's campaign. Platforms like Mini Social and Octoly are mostly gifted platforms. I will, um, I, this, the month of June, I had the privilege to be able to take on more gifted collaborations because I did have so many paid collaborations as well. Um, and I had a couple in May that I got paid for in June. That is something I wanted to make a point of because as a smaller creator, you have to be really picky and choosy with how many brands you're collaborating with and how much you're getting paid because you still need to be able to make money. But if you're taking on too many gifted collaborations, then you're wasting your time because you don't want to do a bunch of work for free, basically. A couple of those collaborations did get pushed to July because of delays in shipment and product delivery. So that took a little bit of weight off my shoulders, but I also did not find that out until like the very end of June. So I was still kind of having those on my books. Those also were gifted collabs, so they weren't too high stakes for me. So I didn't have to worry too much about them. Now, moving on to how I organize my collabs. At the beginning of every month or as collaborations come into my inbox, I will add them all to a list and write down any important dates, things I'm going to need to create them, if I'm gonna get product shipped to me, etc., etc. I will write all of that down just on a piece of paper of on like a little notepad and just make sure I have everything listed out so I can see it visually in front of me. Then I will put those on my calendar, whether that be a paper calendar or your e-calendar. That is another big thing you have to put, I would recommend putting important dates down, uh, date, due dates of content, dates that you expect shipments, the dates that, um, the date that the content needs to be live, um, et cetera. And this is something that I had used in college. Actually, I got introduced to it in a project management class, which is called a Gantt chart. Now let me pull up a Gantt chart, um, the definition of a Gantt chart real quick, just so you guys have it. A Gantt chart is a chart in which a series of horizontal lines show the amount of work done or production completed in a certain in certain periods of time in relation to those to the amount planned for those periods. So for example, I created, I will put like on the screen like a little example section of my Gantt chart that I currently have that I'm currently working off of. So let's just I'm just gonna use parade as an example. So I will put my parade collab and then I'll put the date that the campaign is starting. I will put the date I'm expected to receive the product. I will then put the date that I am expected to shoot that content, give myself a little bit of block to edit it, and then I will put the date that it needs to be completed and posted. And you can also add a line in there for payment if that is applicable as well. But this is just a really easy way for people who are visual learners or visual, very visual people. I'm a very visual person. I need to be able to see what I'm doing or see the progress I have with these collaborations to be able to keep organized and keep sane throughout all of this. This way of organizing your content really keeps you from going crazy, missing dates, being not being able to have time to shoot the content. Say you get a collaboration and query in the middle of the month and you aren't sure that you're gonna be able to fit it into your schedule. This is a really easy way to say, hey, I have a block of time here that I can create this content. 
but I won't be able to do it until this date because I have other collaborations set up. The biggest thing as an influencer without a management company or a team behind them is that you need to be able to keep track of all these important dates because you don't have anyone else reminding you, hey, this is due this date, have you been able to do this? So this is the biggest thing because forgetting to post on time may make brands not want to work with you in the future if you are late posting or if you're late emailing them back, it may turn brands off from working with you. Communication is definitely key with these brands, especially as a smaller influencer. If there are any delays, say you need to be shooting outdoors and the weather is really crappy, you know, communicate that with the brand because most of the time they will understand and they will be able to work with you on dates and pushing things back if needed. If you get a product delivered and it's broken, make sure you reach out to the brand right away so they can send you a replacement quickly and you can get to shooting the content that you need to create. Now let's talk about payment schedules. As an influencer, payments come, I, payments can come at a variety of times. It can come as soon as you send them that content. They will PayPal you or Venmo you or whatever, however they, they pay you, they will pay you right away. Or a lot of bigger companies and agencies work on a net 30 schedule. A net 30 schedule is basically I think the way, easiest way I can describe it is if you were in a regular 9 to 5 job, you either get paid every 14 days or every 30 days. So that is the kind of schedule that these companies will pay out on. I am still waiting on a couple of payments from June um, as of, at the time of filming this video. It, it really does suck sometimes because you will be put in limbo a lot of times, um, not really knowing when that payment is going to come through. Brands have different ways of paying you. Sometimes they'll pay you through PayPal, sometimes they'll pay you through a direct deposit, sometimes they'll pay you through a third party platform like Bill.com or Stripe. Um, so it just depends on the company. Also, feel free to ask lots of questions to your contacts if you are confused about these payment methods because I got a couple and it's really, I got a couple new collaboration types this month, this past month, and it really is just like trial and error and winging it as you go kind of thing. Had I not put these systems in place, I really would have been lost this past month trying to create all of this content. This, the, this way I worked it out really does give you a visual representation of how much you, work you have, when due dates are, and something I also forgot to mention about the Gantt chart is that in the specific program I use, Team Gantt, you can um, copy and paste a link into your Google Calendar or your Apple Calendar to lay out all of the stuff, all of the things in your calendar so you can see exactly what needs to be done on what day. You can also set it to where you only can work Monday through Friday, Saturday through Sunday, Monday through Saturday, etc. I have it so I don't see anything on my calendar for Sundays because I do try to take that day to rest and not really do a ton of work. Um, that is another thing I love about those these programs is that they are free and they are available. I'm not getting paid to talk about this, but if you are watching this Team Gantt, I would love to have a free subscription because you only get one Gantt chart without paying for it. So, but that is just, that is the system that I used in college, so that's just what I've been using. That is basically how I kept myself organized throughout the month of June. Being an influencer, it does vary. Collaborations do vary month to month. It depends on what, you know, how many inquiries you get, how many brands you pitch to, how many collaborations will be the best fit for you. And again, like I mentioned previously, as you grow, it will, the, the amount of collaborations will lessen, but keeping organized like this is a really good way to be able to stay sane and know exactly what you have on your plate each day. And someone like me with very intense anxiety about things like that, I hate being late and I hate not knowing what I'm doing. So this is again a really easy way just to lay everything out and it's totally foolproof. That is about all I have. I know this video will be a little bit shorter than my other videos, but I just wanted to get this information out there because I know how much it helped me this past month and I wanted to help y'all out. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe, leave me a comment down below and follow me on my other social platforms so you never miss me in between uploads. Um, the next couple videos might be a vlog, might be some travel stuff because I am going on a little trip soon here. So get excited for that. I hope y'all enjoyed and thank you so much for watching to this point. I will see y'all on my next video. Thanks. Bye.